All right, time for the next installment of the Agua Caliente retrofit here. These are for the logos that are going on the monument sign. So the last video was replacing these letters. So I got these, these logos ready. Uh, just off the top, they called out four. Uh, should this come up, I went ahead and pushed it closer to five to make room for the uh, power supply in there so we could have primary. And just to give uh, the LEDs a little room to breathe. So... So let's go over the lay of the land. We've got, uh, you get two logos. You got the big monuments and you got the small monuments. That's how I broke it down. So you got left and right. So they're just mirrored, but the parts are specific to the left and to the right. So you've got, these are the, these are the cans, the backers, return material, inner strut braces, keeping out for the power supply nuggets there. We'll go over that. And these face rings, because this whole thing's like 60 something inches, these are all broken apart. So keep an eye out for these junctions, the little splice pieces. And for the big logo, the, poly, the polycarb is gonna be bigger than we can route. So you'll have to cut it out by hand. So look out for this little compass jig here uh, for being able to describe a circle. Small logo, again, just a smaller version, but you've got a left and a right, and all the parts are specific to left and right. Uh, you got return material and two face or face rings for the cabinet. The retainers, I went ahead and put those on their own file here. So you'll have the same splice. These are the same splice pieces uh, as the other one, but uh, you're going to have to splice these retainer rings into one piece and weld them together. You got your return materials and the two smaller guys with their, their return material there. Uh, 063 white, white for LED inserts and You've got these guys here are, under, are 49 inches. These are routable, but because these guys are pushing, what, yeah, 68 inches or so, you're going to have to hand cut these. But again, you'll be able to use that compass that I'm routing so you guys can lay it out pretty quick. So patterns specific. All right, so we'll start with the small page. The small page kind of is like the main reference is where I started. So a lot of the reference stuff's on here, and then you just carry that forward to the big ones. So like I said, you have a you have a left and a right. The scribe line here uh, for install, this is kind of where the, the, the wall should be. So you can see where I copied that kind of line. Now these are just round logos um, that the face can kind of spin around in. So these cabinets don't need to be perfectly like level. You're just gonna try to match that reference line. So on the pattern, you'll have that reference line. And then you can choose to use these uh, um, these holes to drill. I don't I don't remember if that's a stud wall or if it's actually I think it's a stud wall rather than um, rather than block. So you could use togglers or whatever you choose. So you kind of pick and choose those holes. So the way that works is these holes here line up with the braces, and they're kind of unequal channels that'll be out of the way. So you can see where that will be, where the, the wall goes. That'll be on the back of the cabinet. You can line it up and then you can kind of, you know, pick and choose your holes there. Um, now, I don't know where power is popping through for install. So I do not have a power hole through here. So when you go to put this pattern up on the wall, um, you might want to mark where it goes and then you can measure off and you can drill your own hole in the backer here somewhere. So hopefully it's not right on a brace. I'm sure it will be, but uh, you just need to get the power into this cabinet somewhere and then run it up to where the power supply is. Power supply is going to be living right in here. So for fab, we kind of talked about um, you're going to do reverse channel letter style where the returns are made to go on top of the rings. So like you've done before, you're going to start with the face ring first because that way you have access to the backer second. So you got to make sure you do it in the proper order. So um, lay your face down onto the, onto the table. You've got a long piece. I, I did an extra two inches for you. So just bend this 90 and that gives you a starting position. You don't, there's really nowhere you have to start. You can just start in one spot and work your way around. But I, I encourage you not to have a seam anywhere in here. So maybe stagger them like here and here or something. And then these guys here, we did this before on the other ones. Um, we're gonna do a couple little cleats that stick out um, so when you're welding on the face, 
uh, to the to the return. Just skip this area and keep going around. And then um, when it comes time, I'll show you just slide in those little one by bars and that'll give a little cleat for the face to sit on. So anyway, so do your return on this, get it all set. Probably not stitch the seam together. Maybe just start it, maybe start tacking it just a little, but I'd leave this loose. So that way you can guide it around the backer and give yourself some room because it'll probably want to shrink and all that. So it might not fit the backer very well. So, um, but yeah, go ahead and tack that on there and then flip it over and put this onto your table and go ahead and weld the, the face on top of the backer like we talked about. So the seam will be on the side. So go ahead and tack that all the way around. When you go to put this ring on, um, obviously this needs to be like level straight up and down this way. I know that this, this will be for install, but when you put this on, the idea is to make this as much as like this is bottom and this is top as possible. So the idea is you'll go ahead and weld the ring around this. And then when you flip it over, you'll be able to sight this like a little rifle scope and then lay this on top and you'll be able to see this line. And then you'll just kind of eyeball that and kind of spin this back and forth to where that line is sort of in that notch and then go ahead and tack it. And then that will kind of get these sort of right where they need to be towards the bottom. Now it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect, perfect, perfect. But the idea is to not have these two cleats at the top, obviously. So we want to keep these at the bottom as much. So this is your bottom, that's your top, but uh, it doesn't have to be down to the micron. So go ahead and get this welded to that. Once that's all tacked up and you, you know, seam, uh, tack up the seams, then you come in with these um, like strut bars. The idea is there's no lords on any of this because once you weld all this all the way around, this is going to be a nice oil can and it's going to be all warped and in like a turtle shell. So um, lords will probably be fighting that its whole life. So the idea then is just to clico these in spot and then just go ahead and tack these. Um, where do I got it? Ah, da, da. Let's see. I thought I had them other. There you go. Yeah, so just go ahead and tack these in top and bottom all the way along. Doesn't need to be, you know, super welded, but just make sure it's all tacked. And you're just going to tack all these ribs vertically. Um, that's for the small and the big. So just use the Coleco holes. And then, like I say, these large holes, the 3 eighths through, that'll be for mounting. So then once you have those tacked in, um, then you can go ahead and Coleco in the, the spot where the power supply goes. And this flange will face up. So it'll face towards the face, towards the small side here. And then you go ahead and just, I got a couple spots for plug weld right there. And then you can sort of just tack it around and then tack it to the side there. So this is just going to be sticking out like a flange. Boom, boom. And um, you'll have a couple spots here for your grounding and your bonding. And uh, then the power supply will just sit there. And like I said before, install is going to have to drill their own hole and bring it out. So once these are up, you'll have the small um, half inch or three quarter inch little bars towards the top. That'll be for the um, 063 white white. And you'll see where those holes correspond, where you can just frap frap. And then that creates our enclosure for the primary. So the primary is just going to live um, right here in between. So that's that strut, the two inch strut. Uh, the green is the 063 uh, with the LEDs. And this is the power supply living right in there. And you can see where the 090 flange goes towards the back. And then this bent flange goes up towards the face. And uh, that way the screws have a little bit of room to clearance when you screw it in. So that's that. Um, you're going to do that for both. Um, obviously, this is nice because these are one piece. Um, and then you got the cleats. So let's go over the cleats real quick. You got a little little bad bad cut list here. So just little three inch chunks of uh, one by one by eighth flat bar. You're going to take that little one eighth flat bar and you're going to eyeball it a, a, a quarter inch out. I have this a quarter inch sticking out. So quarter inch is probably enough. Obviously, it can be out a little more. No big deal. Um, you've got all this room in here for your retainer. And then that obviously will give something nice for the face to just sit on. So slide it through there, kind of get it situated and then just throw some tacks and burn it to the inside of the return. So that's what I was saying is um, leave this clean as you're coming around and tacking it initially and then slide the little bar through there. Um, and then that'll give a little support for the face when they go put it in there. So the small one is a good indicator of what you're gonna do with the big one. Um, oh, let's go over the retainer too. So retainer, you've done this. Uh, start with the three quarter inch first. You got the little guy here, 
and then you've got the longer piece towards the back uh, here. So do this, do this one first because you can get to it easier and then flip it around and do this side. Obviously, you can do a little uh, 90 degree bend there for the seam and it can tuck in because it's not going to hurt anything. But you can't get away with that on the outside pieces. So the outside pieces, you're going to have to um, butt weld them together and weld the inside seam as much as possible and burn it and then grind as much as you dare. But I suggest leaving as much as you can to, to, to give this strength and maybe even leave a little hump on the outside. You know, it's not really going to be noticeable. Um, you can maybe make this when you go to attach it because then you're going to have to drill and attach this yourself. So maybe you can put the seams to the top and bottom or something like that. And then you might also just need to grind the cabinet just a little bit. So that way you can leave a little bit of weld. So you want to leave a little bit of weld for strength, like leave as much as you can here and then grind this off as flush as possible. But you might just kind of grind the cabinet flat right in this area um, and that way you can leave room. So obviously that's that seam's not going to be very strong uh, once you butt weld it and then you um, and then you grind it. It's not going to be very strong. So anyway, that's what you're going to do for the outside of the retainer. So do your inside first, do your outside. Uh, you got the long piece. Everything's got a two inch extra length to cut. Um, so then you got your return bender hill there. Same thing. These are equal uh, 90 and bend and then 90 and bend and then go ahead and cut and make it fit. All right. So I think that's it. So let me just go over what's left on the big one here. So the big one's a little different because it had to be broken up because they're it's bigger than the material. So the only difference is that you're going to you're going to bend, you're going to have a, a majority of the circle. You're going to bend this up and then this little slot allows these little splice pieces to slide in. And you're just going to go ahead and tack those, tack those. And then this flange bent up gives you a nice fillet weld to bend, to, to weld all the way along. Tack it, tack it really good. So that's just the first thing you have to do before you do what you did on the little guys. From that point, it's the same thing. Um, for the face rings, same exact thing. You got two notches here for your little cleats and you have a notch here. So go ahead and click all these together first, tack them together, put it face down, uh, return goes on top. Again, try to stagger your seams for strength. So maybe put your seams at like, you know, two o'clock and eight o'clock or something, or, you know, 830 over here so you're in between this seam and this um, or maybe put it down here whatever so try to stagger your seams away from these seams give it strength flip it over you know you'll have this tack together go ahead and weld it to the backer and then go ahead and put your braces in same thing uh, tack them up and down and then put in your same it's these these are actually identical for all all four so all four so you can choose whichever one goes in which it's no no big deal there um and then same thing in retainers. Retainers the exact same. Um, you'll just know, I didn't put any identification markers on anything. You'll just know because everything is just that much bigger. So this one's, uh, you know, 107 versus the small logos, you know, are 77. So lay all these pieces out and obviously your shorties. And these are also the same thing. These are short. Um, well, actually this shows up well in the retainer stuff. Yeah. So just look for the shorter pieces, put those together with that even though these are the same size strips. So don't accidentally weld this shorty to this long one because then you'll be sad. Um, anyway, uh, so I think that's about it. Um, the faces, right. So the the small logo faces fit on the router. That should be fine. But for the big ones, you're going to have to get the uh, sheet coil out. So what I did is I made this compass. So you'll just take this. You got two 165 holes on this side. You can take like a number 10 sheet metal screw shoot it through and make it poke through maybe about a half inch to a quarter inch to a half, just so it has that sharp point. And then you can just have somebody get in the middle and kind of hold it down and smash it into the plastic. And then somebody can either put another screw here and make a scrape, or you can put a Sharpie or something or oversize this hole a little bit and, and take a marker. And then somebody, somebody, you know, stay here, keep this in place. Um, and then as it goes around, just, just, just drag it all the way around and you'll have your nice circle. Do that twice and you'll have your material for um, for the big boys here. Um, if you do just lay it out, it's 67 and a quarter. Um, and I also sent this to route. So, um, you know, you can get this size from route if you need it. 
Um, but anyway, so, and it's, and it gets the same treatment. You'll have the little cleat sticking out, put them out a quarter inch, just like you did on the other one. Uh, power supply is the same, all that. Uh, this is going to be broken into two pieces. So, you know, get these, um, get these done with the Tetras and then make your leash stick through here and, and make the leash long enough to make it up to this power supply here. And then same thing here, you'll do this guy and then have a leash out. Uh, for the little guys, you'll just have a leash, a single leash out this this hole here and just make it long enough to get over here to the power supplies. So, all right, um, I think that should do it. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up.